All right, hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. So it has clearly been a little while since I have uploaded a video. It's been a little while since I have even filmed or vlogged anything that's been going on, like at least three months now. Today I am finally getting this video uploaded for you. It has taken me so long, but to be honest, I've just had so much footage and every time I come to try and edit this, it's just like way too overwhelming and I'm like, I can't focus on it. So I've been putting it off and putting it off, but I'm going to get it up for you now. So I will explain very briefly what this vlog is about and what happened basically in the last two months of being in Europe. Um, and then I'll just, yeah, start the footage. So basically it was a super shitty job of vlogging. I basically just have a whole bunch of B-roll from traveling and what happened was, as you saw in my last vlog, we left Albania. So we took a ferry from Albania to Italy. And then from Italy, we went to Croatia. And in Croatia, we landed. And this is where I kind of diverted from where my partner and Roxy, our Albanian rescue dog. My partner, our friend, and Roxanne, they all went to Zagreb, Croatia. And that's where they were. Well, I flew from Split, Croatia, to London again, and in London I actually met my mom, and... What happened is my mom was supposed to be going on a cruise with my grandmother, but unfortunately my grandfather had some health concerns, some health issues come up, and my grandma had to stay back and look after him. Um, everybody is good and healthy now. It was just not a great situation at that time. So my grandma wasn't going to be traveling while her husband was sick. My mom messaged me literally days before we left Albania asking if I wanted to meet her in London and go on a cruise of the UK. My mom is a travel agent and so she does get experiences, travel experiences, cruises, trips, all that kind of thing um, that are a little bit of a perk with her job. This <laughs> cruise that we went on is uh, not a way that I travel hardly ever, really never. To put it simply, I can't afford going on luxury cruises. I'm very grateful to have been able to experience it, but I was definitely most excited for just seeing all of the United Kingdom that we did and we saw so much in the two weeks that we were on the cruise. Yeah, I don't have a lot of footage from the ship simply because one, I was working um, any moment that we weren't off the ship and traveling around and sightseeing, doing tours. Um, so I was actually quite busy with my video animation job. On the cruise, we started in Scotland. Um, we also went to Ireland and Wales and ended in England. And then in England, at the end of the cruise, one of my closest friends from Germany. She just so happened to be in England at the same time and was literally just a couple hours from me. And she picked me up after the cruise and we spent, I think four days together living in her van and exploring Glastonbury, which is somewhere I've never been before. And it was just all around an amazing experience. And I flew back to Zagreb and I spent two and a half weeks with my boyfriend and our dog in Zagreb, Croatia before all three of us flew back to Canada. And that was on my birthday on June 23rd. We flew back to Canada and the story continues. But let's get into this trip. I'm going to voice over a little bit. And then for the most part, it will just be footage of Scotland, Ireland, and Wales. And I hope you enjoy seeing everything. I'll try and give as much information as possible, but here's a vlog that took me months and months and months to get around to editing. <laughs>
Queen Elizabeth II. stop was Edinburgh, Scotland. Arriving to the sound of bagpipes, we began our tour at the Edinburgh Castle. It's a castle standing high upon large rocks, been destroyed and rebuilt over thousands of years, possibly standing years before the 1400s. You have a fabulous view of Edinburgh from the castle's Argyle Battery, and the six-gun battery was built in the 1730s. see the Great Hall, which was completed in 1512. It served to hold royal ceremonies at the castle and was built for James V, who was killed only a year after its completion. The oak timbers on the ceiling were found to be felled in Norway around 1510 and then were shipped to Edinburgh. Beneath the Great Hall and Queen Anne building, there are two tiers of stone vaults, and over centuries they've been used to store food and military supplies, but mostly they were used for prison of war captures. Out of the castle and into the city, we found some vegan fish and chips and wandered the colorful, bright, and musical streets. We stumbled across a lovely public park slash garden, enjoying the June flowers before making our way back to the waterfront where we were tendered back to the ship. Next stop, Cawdor Castle. We had gotten off the ship in Invergordon near Inverness, Scotland, and took a tour bus out to the castle. Cawdor Castle was built around a 15th century tower and continued to expand with additional buildings. If you're familiar in any way with Shakespeare's Macbeth, there is a character named the Thane of Cawdor but it is thought to be very unlikely that Shakespeare himself would have been writing about the true Cawdor Castle, but it's a fun story nonetheless. My personal favorite part of the Cawdor Castle were the gardens, as you can see here. They were so green and lush and beautiful.
Our second stop for the day was at the Culloden Battlefield. The Battle of Culloden in 1746 was where the Jacobite army was defeated by a British government army and secured the government victory. Over 2,000 men died and it signified the collapse of the Jacobite, which were a group of mainly Gaelic-speaking Catholics, opposition. One very unique part of Scotland that we got to visit was Musa Island in the Shetland Islands. It has been uninhabited since the 19th century, except for the hundreds of sheep grazing the harsh weathered lands. The main sight to behold on Musa Island is the 2,000 possibly more year old Brock, which is a circular stone tower that would have been used to house something likely several families at a time. The Musa Brach still stands strong and we even got a chance to climb for the incredible view to the very top. Next up, Ullapool, Scotland. One interesting fact about this area is that many of the concepts and discoveries around tectonic plates were actually made here in the Victorian era. There is a very popular nature reserve called Knocking Crag, which we only had a short time to see, but it showcases these rock formations very clearly. We did, however, get the chance to explore the ruins of Ardvrek Castle, built in the early 1590s by the clan McLeod. Now, I believe we were told a story of its haunting, but I would butcher the retelling of the story. It's located in a beautiful valley surrounded by a loch. In the town itself, we enjoyed some sun for the day and had some delicious oysters and mussels and beachcombed for colorful sea glass. Welcome to Ireland! Unfortunately, due to big waves, we were not able to make our port stop in Dublin, but we did make it to Belfast and had probably my favorite tour, if I'm being honest, an afternoon at the Giant's Causeway. The causeway features roughly 40,000 exposed, large, polygonal, shaped columns rising in various heights from the earth. It was truly a sight to behold. We hiked around the valley hillside, overlooking the sea and admiring this incredible natural rock formation. say one of my most unexpected highlights of this trip would have been seeing whales. I did not have very many expectations, but we took a driving tour through Snowdonia, which is a very big national park containing large mountains and beautiful lands, rivers, and lakes. 
The natural mountainous beauty reminded me of the rugged landscape highlights I know and love from back home in Canada. Next up was Cork in the Republic of Ireland. Here our tour took us to the Blarney Castle where the ever famous Blarney Stone is located. I personally chose not to kiss the stone only because the line to get to it was over an hour and there was so much more to see around the castle itself and through all 60 acres of the gardens and the stunning parklands. The ancient trees and stones were believed to be a garden of druid origin and center of worship in pre-Christian days. The magic felt on these grounds was really something. It is thought that to kiss the Blarney Stone, one will be given the gift of the gab, or a skill of flattery. And yes, they do clean the stone for health reasons between each person's kiss. Blarney Castle is believed to date back to around the year 1200, but was destroyed and rebuilt again in 1446. Good morning, everybody. I have not really been vlogging throughout this trip that I've been on and I don't want to start off the vlog looking like this because I just woke up and my room service came for breakfast so I have a minute alone so I'm going to start this vlog out differently but I have been on a cruise with my mom and we have been going through um, Scotland, Ireland, and Wales. We started in England and we're ending in England, so today is our last full day um, on the ship. But um, it was something that kind of, yeah, it's super last minute showed up. My grandma and my mom were supposed to be cruising on here together, but my grandma had to stay home because we had some family health stuff, so my mom invited me here because I was already in Europe. It was just a quick flight from um, Split Croatia to London. And yes, I was able to come on this cruise with my mom. And it is a very, very luxury cruise line. And so it's, some, it's a way I don't normally travel. Um, and I'll be honest, cruising is not a way that I typically want to travel because I do like staying for long periods of time in places to really get like the full feel of them and explore as much as possible. Then I kind of just got like an appetizer, a little snippet of all these places. So I definitely know where I would want to come back to and some idea of what I would want to do when I came back to these places with my partner who is not on this cruise, he is watching Roxanne. He and Roxanne are staying together in Croatia. So yes, there have been a lot of adventures. Um, uh, like I said, I'm gonna have breakfast now, but that is my quick fill-in. And then I am probably just going to recap all of the clips that I've managed to vlog throughout this travel time. Cause it's, it'll have been an 11 night cruise. So we've seen a lot, we've had an, uh, port excursion day almost every single day but it's morning time i'm gonna eat some food and then we are headed in to see stonehenge today which should be exciting and it's our last day last full official day on the ship our final stop on our cruise journey was at stonehenge which the video clips do not do any justice Stonehenge is a prehistoric monument weighing around 25 tons and archaeologists believe it was constructed around the year 3000 to 2000 BC. It is thought to have began as an ancient burial site. 
The energy around it that day with the clouds coming in and the crows flying around was really something. most spiritual um, little town and the shops are all very metaphysical and magical so I'll show you a little bit of what it looks like but we have some very interesting things to see like magical water wells and a tour which is this like one pillar tower on top of a mountain on top of a hill so we have lots to explore and i'm going to show you some of what we see and do here in glastonbury After the cruise, my lovely and beautiful German friend Marie took me into her very awesome van to show me around Glastonbury, England. I was very present during our time there, and so unfortunately my footage is fairly limited, but it was amazing and so magical spending the time together after four years in the vortex of Glastonbury. We spend some truly life-changing moments at the Chalice Wells, but we decompressed and rested our spirits sleeping in an organic herb farmer's field. Everything was beautiful, minus my hay fever. On our last night together, we ate a lovely buffet van dinner and Marie sang to some cows that came to visit us.
They like that. <laughs> you don't know me. We're good friends now. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> And finally, I reunited with Roxy and my partner in Zagreb, Croatia, of course, watching a football game in the square to end things off. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you all for your patience and I'm very excited to get a bit of an update uh, posted for you guys. But thank you all for watching. Please comment and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.